Hey everyone, Gareth Fro from 97 and welcome to today's Doctor Who action figure review. Today I'm excited to bring you the second Doctor Electronic TARDIS from the Abominable Snowmen in vain of last year's uh, online exclusive for character, the Jungles of Mechanus set, which featured two Daleks from The Chase. And this gives us a second Doctor, which has been in the kind of pipeline for a while. These prototype images came out years ago, uh, but was never released. It was meant to originally kind of like a Yeti, uh, but due to it being leaked and some disagreements, I mean, it never came out. So I thought you'd have the Yeti, but we do have the second Doctor and his TARDIS from season five, which is electronic, which is the first one we've had in over 10 years, a uh, classic TARDIS anyway. And this unique version has uh, the doors on the wrong way round. Obviously it looks wrong, but it is accurate for the show. But what are the figures when I get to them individually? So first of all, we'll take a look at the packaging and then we'll be looking at the figures, uh, giving them my thoughts, taking a look at all the details and comparing them to previous uh, releases. So this box does feel a lot wider and it does display the figures better. It's got the window going all the way round, nothing's cutting it off. So you can see the second Doctor and the TARDIS are inside. You've got the Jodie Whittaker era version of the logo at the top left. Gold sticker saying Carrot Doctor and Exclusive at the bottom. Tell us what the set is. Second Doctor Electron and TARDIS from the Abominable Snowmen. 1967 collector series set with light and sound effects. Got a massive red banner at the bottom right saying Electronic uh, with an exclamation mark. Let you know it's not the B&M sets which have the parts in uh, but are not used as electronic and light sound effects. 5 Plus logo and the character logo at the bottom right. At the top we've got the same logos and information but with the character online website link and also the 3D graphic of the TARDIS which is what you see these uh, Doctor and TARDIS uh, releases. With the same information uh, with the left and the right hand side of the box. On the back we've got a great promo image of the second Doctor in his fur woolly coat and the TARDIS which has got his door open and also the nice write about the Abominable Snowman if you want to pause and read it now go ahead which tells you about the story of the Abominable Snowman what happens in it sadly this is a missing episode uh, so you have no visuals and the audio has survived obviously it's reconstruction so you can be viewed uh, alternatively same information and logos uh, which you can see around the packaging but the bottom right got the trademark and copyright information and the bottom of the box got the uh, copyright stuff uh, barcodes, the character logo, uh, all the kind of general information that is nicely put on the bottom so it doesn't spoil uh, the packaging. If you want to display it in the box, you don't kind of ruin it. It's kind of the usual stuff. What's added on this time is how to insert the batteries. No batteries are included. This It takes three AAA batteries, but you do have to buy them yourself. Taking them out of the box, as you see, the second Doctor and Tars look great. The landscape at the background is the setting for the Abominable Snowman with the snowy hills, uh, which I think is filmed in Wales. What they've done really cool the bottom of the box is make it kind of curve to kind of replicate a kind of hill. Um, it's only a slight little uh, little curve, uh, but it has been sort of made instead of just like the kind of flat standard what you get. Um, they've kind of curved it a bit as much as they can, I guess, to give that authenticity of it being a hill. So that's a really nice little touch. And once you've unstrapped all the figures, uh, sort of cutting all the little white wires and screwing out the TARDIS from the bottom. Taking the figures out of the way, uh, there are a few Easter eggs to spot. Uh, there may be more, but this one's I can spot. So we've got the Yeti uh, from this story, not the version from the Web of Fear. That would have been quite actually if they put that in as well. Top right, we've got the Tibetan Monastery uh, on the hillside. And on the left-hand side, we have the Raston uh, Warrior Robot from the Five Doctors. The shaggy fur coat is seen in the Five Doctors when the second Doctor returns. I think he's in the Ice Warriors and a, maybe a couple others. Uh, stories but yeah it's just a homage uh, his return the five doctors and lastly with the packaging we do get a really nice leaflet telling us how to insert the batteries how to open the door how the button works at the bottom I say, if you've had these sets before, you know exactly how uh, the flight control TARDIS works. You've got nostalgia for the first one with uh, that was released for Series 3. But it just shows you how it kind of operates in the bottom of the bottom and how to put the batteries in. The style information that we all take for granted, but if it's the first time having this set, uh, then it is a good read. So that's all the packaging done, and here's a... Hang on, where's, where's the figures? Can you... can you hear that? Better late than ever, I suppose. So here is the second Doctor in his shaggy fur coat and the good old blue box, the TARDIS Type 40. So first we're going to be taking a look at the second Doctor's new variant, which might be one of my favourite variants they've done. And in the second half of this review, I'll be looking at the TARDIS. First, I'll take a look at the articulation before I go onto the detail. So it can turn side to side. It could probably do the full 360, but you don't want to scratch the neck. The arms go around the full 360. These are new moulds. So you've got the 360 bicep turn but unfortunately due to the coat being 
uh, sort of so padded out, it does actually restrict it. So you can kind of turn it side to side. Uh, joint in the middle and the hands do the 360. But because the hands are so in this massive fur coat, um, it is hard to kind of grab and you can't really do the full 360. Uh, the waist can turn side to side. The legs go 360 swivel back and forth at the joint and the shoes are sculpted to the trousers. On to detail now and the head is an amazing face sculpt. The paint applications have beautifully brought out uh, Patrick Triton's uh, great face. Uh, the hair is black with I think some white bluey highlights which kind of uh, really make the sort of sculpt stand out more. But it's got pink around the eyes and the lips. Uh, blue eyes, black eyebrows. You can see under the fur coat his uh, regular costume with the uh, bow tie. But the main attraction for this is the fur coat and I've got to say it looks amazing in hand. This is kind of overall a uh, ruggedy yellow look uh, with a hint of grey and uh, brown patches. You've got the folds going from the top all around the back of his neck uh, and back round to the middle. All little indents and curves have been painted brown to kind of highlight those. I don't think you see it on camera, but in the middle there is a string going around the middle, which he obviously has to obviously sort of keep it uh, wrapped up. But they've not painted that, they've just painted over it. Uh, a bit like they do the B&M sets where they just paint over this, the previous sculpt that's been used. Um, so it's a real shame they, they couldn't uh, paint that black. Maybe it is a bit too thinly because it is a really thin lining. But yeah, it would have been nice if they could have painted the sort of black around the middle. But yeah, it's got a great texture, really ruggedy feel. No faults at all, just looks amazing. Probably one of my favourite Patrick Triton variants. And then going down to the uh, trousers and shoes, this is more something we're familiar with, uh, with the Patrick Triton figures. Uh, we've got the grey. Uh, the trousers with black squared lining and the shoes are, are light brown with grey at the bottom. I think if you look at location pictures, he is wearing like welly, so there's a nice kind of reference to that. Yeah, it's a really smashing variant of the second Doctor. And comparing it to some other variants which you've seen recently of the second Doctor, so on the left hand side we've got the second Doctor which was from the War Games which was released with the non-electronic TARDIS which I'll be comparing that to this electronic TARDIS version later on. And on the right hand side, we've got him from the uh, two Doctors. Now, just say, this variant really sticks out. And comparing it to the paint applications, specifically for the War Games version, the paint applications for the face are less thick and they're more detailed. It looks a whole lot better and really complements uh, the original sculpt. Now on to the TARDIS, which has the reverse doors and a square topped first and all lamp. No, I did not read that from the back of the packaging, hint, hint. So this TARDIS is really gonna stick out on the shelf because obviously it has the reverse doors which is accurate. I remember when the Eve of the Daleks uh, still book cover was released and people was like, what? But obviously, yeah, it is, that is what happened in the show. And I think it is from Eve of the Daleks and all of series five. Maybe they changed it for uh, season six. Yeah, it is accurate. And it, I say, I think it's going to really stand out on the shelf uh, when you're thinking, oh, that's a, that's a unique version. <laughs> so the overall paint application is like a dark blue, but it's really, really colourful. It really, really sticks out. And it's got this major white wash, which really brings out all... Um, the sort of battered uh, look of the TARDIS. So you've got the, the top of the lamp, um, which again kind of continues uh, the same paint applications. The lamp itself is yellow. I will be doing a demonstration with all that, the kind of light stuff, but yeah. Mine looks a bit wonky. I, I'd say it doesn't look straight. It kind of is going off to the side. So I don't know if I can sort of get in there and sort of nudge it back, but it doesn't really matter. It, it's, uh, once it emits, you can't really uh, notice. But yeah, the windows go away round, um, a sort of clear, like it's light grey and they got like the two windows at the bottom left and the bottom right with this kind of ruggedy texture. The port open side obviously on the right and this is like a sticker and it looks really old and kind of really dirtied up which is quite nice. No handles this time, uh, I, I think that probably is accurate, I think they put them on if they were. So the only thing you've got is the uh, gold key. The police public call box signs are really dark grey blue. And they've kind of been mystified, like it's kind of been worn away, really to give that um, ageness. Going to the back, which is where we have uh, the speaker at the top right. And obviously at the bottom, we've got the battery compartment, which you have to have and screw open with a screwdriver. And obviously then as well, you need to get three AAA batteries uh, and stick them in. So you've got at the bottom, you've got the uh, button, which when you put it down, activates the flight control. Uh, sound effects. We've obviously got the off and on button, so obviously turn it on, flip it round, put it on the ground, and here are the sound effects uh, you can do.
looking at the light close up, uh, I say, I don't know if it flickers or not, but it is very authentic, uh, sort of coming in and out, and um, it does switch off. I thought it was going to keep going, um, but it does stop once the sound effects stop. I think with the original Tenant one, the light just kind of stays on, uh, even though there's no sound effects. That would have been nice for this, but I guess uh, once it's materialised, it's materialised. <laughs> to open up the doors, it's a standard thing. Uh, you open the right one first, then open the left, and they have it open. And to close it, you close the left one back first, then use the button on the floor, uh, which you push, and the right one will close. Inside, we've got the massive battery compartment on the left, which obviously is now in use. <laughs> obviously, it's kind of when to become those trademark things that the battery compartment at the back with no use with the PM sets but now it does have a function which is great there's obviously no classic TARDIS sticker or anything like that because that was what it was like in the show but I think once you put the second Doctor figure in there um, it kind of hides all the uh, kind of nuts and bolts and stuff and finally comparing it to the other second Doctor uh, TARDIS which was released to the B&M range last year from the War Games as you can see, the colour is so much more vibrant. The War Games TARDIS really does look like a black and white version. Like, you're sort of like looking at a colour image and a black and white image because the, the blue on this is so much vibrant. Both got this sort of same standard flat base. Obviously, the doors, obviously, the, the main difference. And the lamp is the same, I believe. Going around, all the same. Obviously, uh, the speaker at the back. Obviously now has a use of time, but it's the same mould, so there's no difference. And finally, here's a diorama with the second Doctor in his fur coat with the TARDIS from the Abominable Snowmen, uh, with all the other villains uh, that he's faced, which have been released in figure form. So you've got the Eve of the Daleks, Emperor Daleks, uh, the Cybermen from Tomb of the Cybermen, which he's faced up at this point in the stories, and obviously the Ice Warriors, which he does face in the story after this. And he does have the fur coat on in that, so it's a nice continuity thing. So overall, this is a really great set. It gives us an amazing uh, new fur coat version of the Second Doctor, which again, has been sort of been a pipe dream, but oh, I wish that was released. Now we have it. And it might quite possibly be my favorite variant. It's really, really cool. Obviously it's from the Abominable Snowman, but it can be used uh, for the other uh, sort of stories of the Five Doctors. There's a picture I saw on Twitter of Aldoa and some fan base and he did comment saying there won't be any more releases of this version because people said oh what about if they do a five doctors BM set down the line will he be released in that uh, and they said no so this is your only chance to get this version and the TARDIS is a really nice addition it's nice to have a colorful version of the TARDIS compared to the black and white BM version from last year and it's great to have the first classic TARDIS which has sound effects for over 10 years. And obviously this TARDIS is going to stand up from the rest having the reverse door side effect. Uh, so <laughs> it's quite funny that it was a production error and it just stuck and then some people thought oh we should probably like move them back now. <laughs> but yeah it's a great pay of applications on both this and uh, the second Doctor. Especially this one bringing out the sort of really batterness effect and the kind of age look. Uh, of the old police box. So there you go, that's my review of the second Doctor and electronic light and sound effects TARDIS from the Abominable Snowmen. Uh, have you got your set yet? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I don't expect to have it so soon because I ordered it a few days ago and on the website it said it was going to be coming in August, uh, early August. So I didn't expect to have it for a few weeks and then I saw people start to get them on social media and obviously, yeah, then I came home from work one day, I was like, hooray, they've, uh, <laughs> it's arrived. The set is limited to 4,000, and I think they might have sold out now, as character's official Twitter account tweeted saying that there aren't many left, so if you wanted one, uh, get one, and that was yesterday. Uh, so, I, unfortunately, if you do want this set now, uh, you may have to find alternative ways. But as always, you can please comment, like, and subscribe. You can also follow me on my social media pages for the channel, uh, for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, links to that stuff in the description below. And at the end, I'll link uh, my other Doctor Who action figure reviews from last year, including the Jungles of Mechanus set, which like this was an online exclusive. And then the other B&M sets are reviewed in 2020. I really do hope this becomes like a yearly tradition. So obviously last year we've got the Jungles of Mechanus set and obviously this set uh, this year. So hopefully next year we'll get another one. What that will be? I don't have a time machine, so I don't know. <laughs> but until next time, everyone, thank you very much for watching. Bye, bye.